Okay, so let's continue the story then. So we have water having um, moved from the soil into the root hair, from the root hair into the cortex, from the cortex into the endodermal cells, and from the endodermal cells into the xylem. But what happens next? Why does it move against gravity upwards through the plant stem and to the leaves that require it? So the first reason, the first uh, mechanism of its movement up the stem uh, through the xylem tubes is simply um, the pressure. Okay, so the root, the water moving into the root and into the xylem, all that water moving into a fixed volume of the xylem tubes uh, causes an increase in pressure. So simply, the pressure of water um, in the roots, because of all this movement of water from the soil into the roots, that creates a pressure which accounts for some movement of water up the stem on its own. Okay, so that's root pressure. The next is called the cohesion tension theory. Okay, so we'll discuss that next. Okay, so we have discussed about uh, simply the pressure of water in the roots um, causing some movement of water up the xylem, but that, read, um, that, that doesn't account for everything. Um, the second uh, mechanism is called the transpiration pull. Now, transpiration um, is really referring to the, the loss of water from you know, the, the leaf structures. So uh, remember the leaves are going to be exposed to light, they're going to be exposed to likely high temperatures, um, and that's good for photosynthesis, but at the same time um, you're going to be losing water through the leaf, okay? So um, just imagine that the stem is quite much longer, and we have the root, water has to move up the stem and into the leaf. But why would it do that? Transpiration pull. So we have water being lost from the stomata of the, the, the leaf, um, even in other places. Um, and what this does, it creates a kind of pull that for, that pulls more water up. Now, how does that work? So, if we are, I mean, we, we got to, if we want to understand this properly, and not just kind of accept it because it's in the textbook, we have to think about the structure of water. And, and um, in F two one two, you do spend a little bit of time on on water, so this shouldn't be brand new to you. And transpiration is mentioned as one of the things, uh, one of the kind of uh, important. Uh, if uh, consequences of, what, of the properties of water. So let's just um, come back to water for a second. Um, H, two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded to an oxygen atom. Those bonds are polar, and because of that, the hydrogens are slight, partially positively charged, and the oxygen is partially negatively charged. So what you can think of is water that's kind of like a magnet with um, a north and south pole, okay? Um, part, half of the, on one side of the molecule is positive, on the other side of the molecule is negative. And just like positive and negative charges can attract each other, just like the north and south ends of magnets attract each other. And the, the theory goes that if you're losing water molecules from the leaf, through transpiration, because one water molecule is attracted to another water molecule, the loss of molecules of water from the leaf structure leads to a pull on the pre uh, on on the other water molecules that the water 
is what each water molecule is associated with. Let me show you what I mean. Right. Okay, so let me show you now what I mean. All right, so um, I've got a little bit of a demonstration. Why don't you come and join me here for a second? Come here, come here. Yeah, there you go. Now, what I've got here, some magnetized paper clips and what I'm hoping to show you is that if if they're all kind of positive slightly positively charged and slightly negatively charged at the other end what can happen is that as you move one others start to follow I hope you can see that I'm moving one but because of the attraction between the molecules the other ones are following and that's what we mean by the transpiration pull. If one of them is being lost to the atmosphere, other ones are pulled along with it. Hope you can see that. Okay, and that, that's basically that. Thank you. So we're back. We've discussed that um, if you lose one water molecule, because that water molecule is attracted to another one, and because that other water molecule is likely attracted to others and those attracted to others still, if one, if you lose water molecules from here, it will, because of cohesion, and that's the cohesion um, tension theory, that if you pull on one, because of the cohesive forces between the water molecules, because of the polar nature of the water molecules and the hydrogen bonds between them, because of that, you are likely to pull others along as well. And that is what um, drives uh, another factor that will be driving the movement of water up the xylem. So one is the pressure from the uh, movement of water into the root. The second is the fact that there is this pull on the water molecules created by the loss of water from the um, leaves. So that's explained by the cohesion tension theory okay okay so um, just to summarize the cohesion tension theory um, you should know about the uh, properties of the water molecule so because of that there is cohesion between water Molecules. Remember, cohesion means attraction between the same uh, particles or molecules. So, um, any attraction between the same molecules is, is referred to uh, or can be referred to as cohesion. All right, and because of this cohesion and the loss of water from the leaf, uh, it generates a tension that pulls water up the column in the xylem, okay? So uh, let's say loss of water evaporation from leaf creates a tension and this is what pulls water up xylem vessel okay now remember if there was no cohesion between water molecules there would be no tension right okay so for example if I had a rope um, if I pull on the rope um, and it just broke there's hardly any tension there but if I pull on the rope and the rope is strong enough because it's all attached in one piece and it stays together then I'm creating a tension so, it needs the cohesion for the move, the loss of water from the leaf to be able to create that tension uh, to pull that water up. Okay, uh, so that's the transpiration pull. There's a third aspect to this, which is called capillary action. So for this, we're just going to briefly look at the xylem vessel as a very thin tube. You might have seen this demonstrated to you in the team lesson. Okay. 
Yeah. So, uh, and it's kind of to do with the with the, the the meniscus effect. Okay. If you see water in a tube, it hardly it will never be flat completely, right? Um, around the edges there will be a meniscus. Now, why did that meniscus form? It formed because, the, as well as cohesion between water molecules, there is adhesion of water to other surfaces if those surfaces can attract water, and if, and if water, uh, because of its polar nature, will be attracted to that surface. Uh, and if it is, there'll be one, I don't, and then you might not be able to see this, there'll be one, you know, there'll be a few water molecules that move upward because they're kind of sticking to the glass or whatever tube it is okay but because that water molecule is again because of cohesion attracted to other water molecules other water molecules are pulled along with it so the side of the water where it comes close to the surface there's lots of water molecules um, attracted to this um, to the surface of the tube and because those water molecules are pulling other water molecules along with them they tend to uh, kind of creep up the side of the tube, forming that meniscus, right? And this will also be happening on the other side, okay? And when these water molecules creep up even further, they will pull along the other ones, and the water in general will be moving up. As long as your tube is thin enough, this capillary action will also be adding to the movement of water up the tube simply because of the adhesion of water to the xylem vessel, okay, or xylem tube, right? Because of that attraction, because of that adhesion, the water kind of creeps up the side and because of cohesion, it pulls other water molecules up with it. That is called capillary action. Okay, uh, if you want to see this for yourself, if you um, have a very thin straw, and we're talking less than five millimeters here, and you put it in a, a glass of water, the, the, the level of water in the straw will be a bit higher than the level of water in the cup. Okay, now why did the water go higher than the level in the cup? Because of capillary action. All right, guys? Okay, I think that is it. Hopefully, we now have looked at the journey of water into the root, from the cor into the root from the cortex, from the cortex into the uh, endodermal cells, from the endodermal cells into the xylem vessel. And now we've looked at three ways that water is then moving up the xylem vessel and into the leaves. Okay? Right. And remember, the loss of water from the leaves is very important in drawing more water up. Okay. Okay. So water is then, you know, we've discussed how water generally moves up the plant stem to the leaves. But how do all the cells that need water get the water? So let's just quickly discuss that. Simply, if water is being lost from cells, then their uh, water potential becomes low because effectively the concentration of everything that's left gets higher. The solute concentration becomes higher, the water potential becomes lower, and because of this, they will draw in water by osmosis from surrounding cells that might have more water in them. Because if they've got more water, they've got a higher water potential, and so water will move from cells that have the higher water potential to the cells that have a lower water potential. Alright guys, I think that covers everything. Good luck.